In the previous video in this series, I unboxed the Fairphone 4, an ethically built smartphone that really fits in to my private, open and responsible technology or port series. Now, although the Fairphone is a great phone hardware-wise, it does ship with Android, a mobile operating system which, like iOS, is known to send large amounts of data back to base. In this case, Google. One of the reasons I chose the Fairphone, though, is that it is supported by EOS, a de-Googled version of Android with a strong privacy policy. I've yet to get E installed on my Fairphone, but that got me thinking that I should get a matching tablet. Today, I show you what I picked and justify my choice. Like smartphones, there are two main routes to getting a privacy-respecting tablet. One is to buy a pure Linux-powered device, which runs a mainline version of the Linux kernel and can run all the apps already in the Linux ecosystem. Optimized for a smaller screen, of course, and touch input. This would be the ideal choice. Now, the alternative is to run a de-Googled version of Android, providing most of the mature features of the operating system without phoning home to Google every five minutes. Pine64, makers of the PinePhone Pro, also make a tablet, the PineTab. Featuring a quad-core CPU, 2 gigs of RAM, Bluetooth 4 and 64 gigs of internal storage, this tablet certainly doesn't have cutting-edge specs. However, it does come with a 10.1-inch screen and a detachable backlit keyboard case for just $120, which is, is really quite an amazing value. Another promising Linux tablet is the JingPad A1. The A1 is a Linux-based tablet running Jing OS, a customized Linux distribution developed by Jingling Technologies. The A1 features an 11-inch AMOLED Gorilla Glass display and an octa-core Tiger T7510 chipset. Along this, you'll find 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, a 16 megapixel rear and 8 megapixel front camera for those monsters who use their tablets to take photos, Bluetooth 5, USB Type C, fingerprint reader, ambient light and gyro sensors, and an impressive 8000 mAh battery. JinkPad claims that this is the first consumer level ARM based Linux tablet, and I find that claim a bit questionable. Not because of the hardware, since I don't consider the Pine tab to be consumer level, rather the software is the problem. As per Jingling's own website, the software part for the JingPad A1 is still in development. Jingling provides a roadmap of software development. The tablet itself was shipped in September 2021, yet many features are still in development. One of the killer features touted by Jingling is that the A1 will have Android compatibility. According to this roadmap, stable support should have arrived in December 2021, with full support by March 2022. There have not been many other updates since December 2021, at least at the time of me making this video, but I will provide an update in the future, as I truly believe this tablet has the potential of being the ultimate Linux-powered tablet. I'm confident that the JinkPad A1 can be great, especially if they manage to crack proper Android compatibility. However, that's coming later in 2022 at best, and I need a tablet now. <laughs> this brings me to the second option, buying an Android tablet and installing EOS on it. A post by a user on the EOS forums shows the tablets currently supported by EOS. Unfortunately, the majority of tablets are from 2016, with some going as far back as 2012. Although it's great that EOS supports legacy devices, I want something new and modern, and the newest tablet I could find in the list is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which was released in 2020. That's still newer than my 2018 iPad, so to me, it's still an upgrade. I should note that just because more recent tablets aren't in that list, it doesn't mean EOS won't work on them. However, getting EOS installed on a tablet is no easy feat, even if a guide is available. So trying to get it working on an unsupported tablet with no guide is not something I'd like to go through, at least not yet, until I get more experience with EOS. So I guess for now, the S6 Lite is my best choice.
Despite being released a couple of years ago, the S6 Lite has some pretty decent specs. Released on May 16, 2020, the S6 Lite features a 10.4-inch 1200x2000 display powered by an Exynos 9611 chipset with an octa-core GPU, 4 gigs of RAM and either 64 or 128 gigs of internal storage with a microSD expansion slot. It also features an 8 megapixel front and 5 megapixel back camera, which of course are mostly useless, Bluetooth 5 and a 70 40 milliamp hour battery with fast charging support. I got mine on Amazon Italy for around 330 euro. So here we are with the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite box. I got the Oxford Grey uh, 64 gigabytes edition and not really much to see on the box here. So let's go ahead and open this guy. Oh, there is a there is a security seal which will go ahead and remove there we go and there we go okay so now there we are so this is the main event of course but let's see what we get here and you'll notice that unlike some more modern tablets perhaps we actually get a charging brick and this in this case i got a euro charging brick but hey it's better than nothing uh usb c to a charging cable uh, sim tool which is weird because i thought i got the wi-fi version but okay sim tool and uh, i assume in here yep is some documentation and stuff a pen okay so this tablet actually comes with a stylus and uh, pretty much nothing else i guess yeah okay let's get this box out of the way and these two So, uh, unsheathing the cover, okay, is a matter of opening the plastic here, there we go, that is the tablet itself, and I mean, you know, guys, it's a tablet, they all look the same. On the side here, you can see that there is the power button as well as the volume rocker, which is a single button. And down here, there's some sort of uh, SD card slot, which is probably what that SIM tool is for. On the back, nothing exciting. There's a camera here. And on the other side, there's a whole lot of nothing. Okay, so I've got to go ahead and uh, remove the few peels on this thing. So there is a peel here to protect the camera. And there are some peels on the side as well. And there we are, the device with all the peels removed. And I guess I'll put this basic stylus here on the side as well. Okay, so let's power it on for the first time. Okay, so as you can see, my default language is Italian since that's where I bought it from. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to English. And we'll just go through the initial setup here. So once this thing gets ready, you'll notice it's just a very plain looking device. It looks like pretty much all other tablets. You can see the size of the bezels here. And honestly, it is uh, significant. However, that does allow for a front-facing camera, uh, which doesn't interfere with the display area of the screen, uh, like how old phones used to be, basically. And I guess if you are going to use a camera on this device, it's probably going to be that one for video calls and meetings and so on. Um, I also got a case for this device, which is this basic thingy here from Amazon. So I'm just going to quickly remove this from its bag as you can see pretty cool color if i say so myself and the nice thing about this is that obviously it's made specifically for this tablet um, uh, with the cutout obviously for the camera on the back so i'm going to go ahead and put it in there okay and it just plops on magnetically there and there's even space 
uh, magnetic for the stylus as well, which is pretty neat, I think. Now, I'm a bit concerned that this only fits on magnetically because knowing how clumsy I am, uh, hmm. However, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And the nice thing about this is that you can angle the tablet on two main angles and they do flip on magnetically and actually it does seem to be attached pretty solidly so i don't think this is actually going anywhere which is pretty good okay so maybe a bit better than i thought maybe i was a bit too quick to judge i've always been a bit judgy with this android stuff but you know maybe i'm being too hard on it right so i'll just finish the setup guys so here i get to this protect your tablet screen and as you can see I can apparently activate face recognition. Now, this doesn't have a true depth camera like the iPad has, so I guess it's just, you know, looking at my face. Um, okay, but I'll see. Yeah, there, it's, there you go. Face recognition is less secure than other lock types because there is a possibility that someone who looks like you or who uses an image of your face could unlock your tablet. So, no, I am not going to do that. Um, let's go back. I'll just set a pin. Okay, and the setup process is complete. Um, so, the first thing I'm going to do is install uh, some sort of benchmarking app. I'll probably install Geekbench. And I'll also install a game so we can look at the performance of this thing. I am not going to review the camera for the tablet because honestly, anyone who takes photos with their camera on a tablet is an idiot in my book. However, I am going to look at the selfie camera since that's something that you might actually want to use. This is what the built-in selfie camera looks and uh, looks like, and obviously what the built-in microphone sounds like. Now remember, I'm still using the version of Android that comes, comes with Samsung, so they're probably doing some post-processing here to make me look arguably better. Uh, but yeah, this is what it is. Now, since this device has a 16 by nine screen, I would assume that viewing video should be a pretty pleasurable experience. So I have YouTube here playing a 4K video and I'm gonna make this full screen. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So now we're at 4K resolution, and I'm actually gonna put the volume on high so you guys can see what it goes up to. So yeah, I'm actually quite satisfied with that. The volume is very, very decent. Good for watching, hello. Good for watching uh, videos in bed, for example. And uh, to get a bit of a better idea of what the sound looks, sounds like, uh, I'm actually gonna go to the YouTube audio library. So the speakers aren't bad, uh, they get pretty loud and they should be pretty good for whatever you want to watch on the tablet. Here we can see the Geekbench results, you'll see that it got a 310 single core and a 1117 multi-core score uh, with all of the uh, details here basically. If you compare the single core results, uh, you'll see that this is on average 
with these devices as you can see a samsung T galaxy tab s6 Lite, pretty much <laughs> average for this device okay which obviously is uh, a third of the performance of the flagship tablets but rem remember this is a 2020 model and if we look at the multi-core scores again pretty much there as you can see this is in line with the performance of a galaxy tab s6 Lite and multi-core again we get a third of the performance of the flagship so an s21 ultra or an ipad pro this isn't so if you're using this tablet as a desktop replacement uh, perhaps you'll, you'll want to consider something a bit more powerful but for my use case for a simple tablet user yeah this is more than fine now let's look at some gaming performance so i've downloaded forza street here which i've actually never played uh not much of a mobile game player So yeah, that looks like it's a good gaming experience for me. Now again, I'm not a huge tablet gamer. Most of the games I play would be 2D. But yeah, um, that seems good enough for me. So that's the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. Honestly, this is a bit of a weird review, since the only reason I bought this particular device is that it's the most recent one supported by EOS at least with a guide and it comes from samsung which is a reputable brand that being said the tablet looks and feels good and should be able to happily handle most of what i throw at it if you're interested in living with private open and responsible technology be sure to subscribe to tech guru and hit that notification bell there are many upcoming videos in this series including one where i flash eos onto this tablet with a full tutorial so make sure you don't miss that if you'd like to help keep this series and this channel going, then please consider subscribing to me on Patreon, like these wonderful people on screen now. Your support makes a huge impact and helps me to buy the stuff I review in these videos, which take a lot of effort to make. You'll also get early access to videos, the ability to, to suggest video topics, an exclusive Patreon chat room, and even technical support. Also, remember that I'm also on Odyssey, where you can watch all Tech Guru videos without using YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and until next time, thanks for watching.